Hello. All right, in this uh, segment, actually, it's uh, going to be about hot water. But uh, I thought, seeing that I'm up here on the hill and I'm going to show you uh, my solar hot water tank, I might as well show you my original array. Um, these are Arco panels made by Arco, and um, they're quads. They're actually four volt panels. So you need four times four is 16 volts. You need four to charge a 12 volt battery. So they're series and foursies and then paralleled off to the house. And I've got uh, one set of 12 runs on one set of wires, the other set of 12 run on another set of wires, and then finally the top 12 panels, uh, they too run on their own set. They follow their own set inside the house. Uh, these panels were experimental panels. They were used in an experiment where they literally put mirrors on them and they overcooked these uh, solar panels. So in the beginning they started off as 50 watt panels but after they burned them for about eight or nine years um, they followed different classes and it went uh, uh, bronze, bronze, muds, gold. These are these are close to a mud. They almost did the full uh, nine years with uh, gold, bronze, and muds, I guess, or something like that, in different classes. And these were the bottom. And I got them uh, <laughs> for uh, $199 for four. And uh, that's what I, that's 20, 26 plus years ago. I bought them, uh, I got them out of the newspaper. We didn't have online back in those days. We didn't have. So I'll show you the backside. I'll show you the backside um, of these panels, and you, you'll even get to see how they deteriorate quickly. So just uh, trying to keep your. So. Uh, if I can get you to come a little closer, a lot closer, and I'll show you how they literally come apart. And this is how you finally lose a panel. I'm down to one last layer of plastic. And once that plastic goes, then there's nothing left to protect the cell. And then you'll get failure. So these panels, so let's go 9 times 26. They're at least 36 years old, these panels. And you can turn this 4 volt panel into a 12 volt panel just by using a Dremel. And you see between the cell, this is like the copper strip that conducts the electricity. Do you see if I were to cut it right there with a Dremel, cut it right there with a Dremel, this strip would be separated right up to the next one, the next one. And then there's one down at the bottom. See, do you see the end of my finger where it says positive? This is this would have been the positive end of the panel. So what the, you would do to turn it to 12 volt is you take a wire from this positive, put it to this negative, and then the power would flow all the way through. Then this positive to this negative. You know what I mean? And then. That's how you would get it into the 12 volt. So this would be, end up being a positive. That's how it works. So yeah, you need four to uh, this. Uh, there's not a sober weld in the entire the entire job. We were, you know, pretty rotten kids back in those days, and. What you got, you got. I, I haven't painted this thing or nothing. I've done nothing. I, uh, I've never ever scraped a solar panel to get the snow off, or I've never ever done that. Take the hose and clean off the, the bird shit. I've never done any of that. But they're at such an angle that it's hard for anything to build up on them. 
So uh, I sacrifice a little bit because I'm not always, uh, you know, 190 to the sun. I'm not always square to the sun. So I do lose a few watts that way. But by keeping it at this angle, I'm you know, protected for, uh, you know, from uh, uh, snow load. And I'm also uh, protected from uh, the other elements like uh, sap and leaves and stuff that fly around in there. And of course, the bird, bird shit whatever uh, sticks to your panel it doesn't take much actually if you were to just shade one cell on a solar panel you would need the next cell to try and power it back up and you're no longer 12 volt you're no longer over 12 volts if it costed you two cells to charge a 12 volt battery that's why shading you can't have any shading whatsoever none you got a little bit of shading, that thing no longer performs for you. So um, when you go high voltage, even though I'm stringing them, they're only 4 volt panels, but if you were to play around the 48 volt, and you get a bird that lays one big pile of crap on one of your cells at 48 volt, it's very dangerous for the panels. They could burst into flames because you have the whole, all of those four panels trying to light up that one dead cell that's covered. Higher the voltage, the bigger the chance you're taking to knock the life right out of them. And they've literally burst into flames when you go into uh, too high of a voltage. Uh, I've seen some people they're always talking about wire size. Wire size, yes it is. It's unbelievably important. Uh, but they say, well, I went 24 volt, or I went 36 volt, or, you know, I went 48 volt for my wire size. They make it sound like you got to buy this damn wire every six months. Or it's a one-time shot. So get the right size, do the run, and don't worry about it. And a lot of these people that have been complaining about uh, yeah but your losses will be too great and I tell them well where where did you mount your panels and they say on the roof so I says you don't even have a wire run to begin with and you're you're whining about you know uh, percentage of loss you don't even have a wire run <laughs> the, the the panels are on your roof I'm like 80 feet from the the my charge controllers yeah, and of my uh, wire it's 80 feet all the way to my charge controllers and uh, I'm running number uh, 8 uh, wire and uh, my losses are like 0.8% uh, percent. so uh, still I mean uh, just put up another panel and be done with it then you can go 12 volt like I, I went 12 volt because a lot of things you buy are 12 volt it's hard to find 24 volt or higher voltage uh, appliances and tools and stuff pumps or what have you and uh, as soon as you play in that voltage it seems that the price is doubled or more on the everything else so that's why I stayed 12 volt charging and just bought the bigger wire so if you look on the ground here you can see the pack wire so I got three negatives all the panel I told you I've got Three out there bottom middle and top so three of the negatives travel through one of the wires three of the positives travel through the other cable so either you can't be no shorting it's either you could take an axe and chop one you're chopping into either all the negatives or all the positives so if I can get my cameraman to uh, we're gonna get in the hot water of this finally uh, if I can get you to just stoop just go right down and low and come to the side over here where I was a little bit and you'll see actually the length of that and what this was was a, a stainless steel pipe that was scored from the mill that I work at on scrap pass so they had the ends welded up and they made a tank out of it so it's that's completely stainless steel everything is stainless steel on there if I screwed anything up, it was me adding. <laughs> and uh, here, this is just a uh, plastic pipe from here out, CPVC. And I'll be getting rid of that, and I'm going to go stainless, just like I did at the uh, other end there. You can, go, you can go galvanize, but you shouldn't be drinking 
galvanize. So it's either plastic or stainless. Never, never, ever, ever use black iron on your water system. Not even an elbow. You add one elbow to your water system and you will taste it. It will be terrible. So if I can get you to kind of look to the side, I don't know. Like I'm getting it pretty good over here where I can see the bricks that I just kind of lined it up with bricks. Uh, nothing's really sealed on this tank. I'm not worried. I'm just worried about stopping the wind and uh, holding it a little bit. I wasn't worried about sealing it too much because if you do that, then you can get moisture in there uh, in the nighttime and it'd be like a little rainstorm. So this thing actually breathes a little bit. You can see how I did add the seal all the way around, and but it's not 100% sealed, this thing. I opened that end, far end up. I've had to open it up <coughs> once there. I um, uh, developed a pinhole leak on one of the welds where they welded. This tank here used to be at my father's camp for years and years, and uh, and then they decided to uh, they wanted to sell the camp and get rid of it. So it's actually quite a quite a long tank. That's there's quite a few gallons in there. That's way bigger than a Cascade uh, 60. This tank, way bigger. Or, uh, look at that! I even got a plant that's kind of surviving, and it's unbelievably hot in there. If I were to crack that tap with my bare hands, the water coming out of here would be scalding. Not right now, I just ran a little laundry inside, but I mean, if this thing here cooked for a whole day, and then it cooked for the the next, and I go to open that, I'd be burning myself. I'll never do that again. I'll use gloves next time. This here is just a little bicycle wheel. Uh, I just thought I'd, I, another fooling around, I don't know what I was smoking that day but uh, I was I just wanted to uh, make a find something that's very common get it at the dump and here I was thinking of just making out of metal and again you just um, pop rivet it on at, at an angle that would catch you know you make one you can make ten you make ten you can make a hundred make a hundred you can make a thousand you know everything's cheap if it all comes from the dump since this thing blows up just go to the dump get another one and uh, I was going to just put the magnets, you know what I mean, down here so that it would... And whatever you get, you get. But it was, you know, just something I was playing. In this case, it was just those plastic bottles. And as soon as you got a little bit of snow on there and it's 20 below zero and it would whack on, you know, it didn't take much to break all that. That's just me fooling around. Here, uh, if you were to... Uh, just swing over to the array again real quick over here and just look at the bolts see the lag bolts in the uh, ground yeah you see how I drilled and just put the anchor bolts in there I did the same thing for the tower really the ones for the tower you know the weight and everything is, is pushing this thing down but uh, these uh, these anchor bolts uh, they're good like uh, for almost 10 tons upside down these anchor bolts once those things are set they're in there so if you ever had rock or anything like that you're better off to uh, just drill and Hilti put the anchor bolts in rather than pour a pad you know if you already got the rock that's how you do it you you drill and you put the bolts in the anchor bolts don't don't fool around with cement and water and all that this is much stronger, much stronger. So that too, I ended up with a, I put another uh, tech wire in here and it, it travels inside, it's inside of this pipe. And um, I was supposed to put another panel up there, that I've only got the one panel. And uh, like I was saying earlier, it gets more and more terrifying to climb this thing. As you get older, it's... <laughs> And uh, I've had a uh, friend, uh, friend, I had an old windmill up there, and I said, uh, when it was screwed up, they had gone. That's another segment I'm going to have to do is on windmills. And uh, I says, you know what? If you want it, you can have it. You go get it, you can have it. So um, I didn't have these bottom uh, uh, clamps on here. And again, these are just muffler clamps, welded muffler clamps. And, um, and I, was, I was terrified of the kids climbing this thing. 
and so that's why I took several of them off and, and you needed a ladder to get to the bottom one and he was almost shitting his pants he hasn't even left the ladder yet <laughs> then, when he passed the first set of cables he started shaking you have to be you got to be ready to rope yourself off and then he says by the time he passed the second set of cables <laughs> like uh he said it was it was very bad he was almost crying he, he felt like passing out he said and uh he felt like throwing up and i know exactly what he's talking about <laughs> i did the whole thing right <laughs> but uh Another, uh, these old C-band satellite dishes. That's, that's another great idea for mounting uh, panels. You know? They're all over the place. You can find these in a dump. You can find them. They're literally all over the place. And they're excellent for adding panels to just get rid of this thing. You well, know, no idea on that. You know, you get the actuator already. Uh, whenever you're putting up a large tower like that, there's a little more work at the beginning, but it's all, um, you know, prep, prep, prep. They call it a gin pole. You're using a pole to find the center of your tower, and you gin pole it up. What I did was I just used safety scaffolding, and that was quite terrifying <laughs> on its own. But all of the uh, drilled hilties in the rock for the cabling, I used the same eyelets and all that and my uh, safety scaffold was cabled it was guided just like the tower is so there was no chance of it ever falling over it was guided uh, impossible for it to sink into the rock into the ground because it's it was rock I'm all on rock here so there's no way that that thing could have ever fallen over uh, I had one guy ask a comment and he says do your fridges I want to see the back of your fridge how the backs of your fridges are outside and there it is and it's wide open at the bottom and he I'm not worried about you know vermin chewing on there I'm not worried about you know chew away 200 bucks for the fridge you give me a little bit of trouble into the dump you go and I'll just get another one you know why some people cry over two hundred dollars? Why? Why are you? You know? Oh, my toilet! My to You know? Your toilet. Your toilet can come out in less than five minutes with a ball peen hammer. And then it takes you twenty minutes to put the brand new one in. You know they're under two hundred bucks. What are you whining about? This tank here. Right. See by the window, and I've got something else going on that's all insulated there. That was just a partial experiment. Again, that's a stainless steel tank, so that can sit there longer than the house. It ain't going nowhere when I decide to fool around with it. So that solar hot water tank that I just showed you in the box, in that insulated box lined with bricks painted black under glass, is just a preheat. So my water goes up to the tank, preheats, and then it goes into the house. And then it's whatever I want to do with it. Uh, in November, when things start to freeze, I drain that. that. That is not a winter operating tank because everything would freeze, the lines would freeze. But the idea was, was it was to feed, so preheat to another system, and that system I was going to build right here in this part, part of the rock. I'd have to dig to get rid of that moss. And then healthy myself a box on there. And that idea there was to really make the hot water. Uh, and I've got this rotten nephew of mine, and he believes that uh, using taco valves, um, they use a little bit of power, but they fire and, and they don't use any power. They just fire, put into the one position and they don't use any power while they're waiting to do their, their next job. Whereas a solenoid, it has to be held into that position. So when you do that, you're burning power when you need it to, to do something. Whereas a taco valve, really, even if it, assuming it used a full 20 amps, 
at 120 volt. That's crazy power. That's assuming it did, which it don't. But it only used it for a split second just to push the valve, and then it doesn't use any power. <laughs> That's pretty cheap, really. You know, if it's just instant, boom, I'm there. You're not going to use a watt? I could live with that. So, um, that's what that tank, that's just another project down the line. Uh, it's just all these projects over the years, they start, uh, you know, kind of getting there. Uh, that's probably going to be a retirement thing. If you're looking at the roof, you see how I've got my uh, vent, just the, just the cap is left and the, the pipe is... Well, I'll tell you, metal roof, you get the right snow and ice and build up and what have you, and then when it decides to let go, you literally have tons, tons of snow that lets go all in one shot. And for those that have metal roofs and they, uh, they live in a bit of a snow belt area, they know what I'm talking about. First times it happens, it's actually quite scary. It's so scary that... Uh, <laughs> I was almost like terrified when it first happened, the very first time snow let go on that roof. And it just sheared that pipe right off. If you look down that hole, it looked, I couldn't have cut it better with a hacksaw. Like it just sheared that pipe right off. Never leaked, so I never touched it, but I'm getting rid of that. I'm gonna go metal again, even if it's gonna cost me a sheet to do the uh, underlap. And my venting will come out the side, underneath like one of my eaves here in that in that battery room. That's the vent for my, my wash machine. Uh, yeah, you might as well, uh, did you, oh, did you shoot the, uh, my, uh, secondary? Might as well hit that. You can see it from the top. So that's when I more than doubled my system. That one there actually produces, the shed produces, uh, a lot more than uh, my original uh, solar array. Like I said, after they mirrored it and they, they burned those panels, if you will, burned the life out of them, uh, they took a 50 watt panel and knocked them down to about 20 watts, 20 good watts, when I first got them. I'd be uh, somewhere around still the 20 watts, no lower than 18 watts. Funny, uh, all those years, they really, they still give me almost what they gave me 20 something years ago even though they mirrored them you can see how they deteriorate and i'm sure mirroring them hot like that you know uh didn't uh and they were in arizona this installation was in, like in an arizona desert it was unbelievably hot plus they mirrored them i guess i wanted to see what they would take we've had a rare uh, propane company ran out of propane and no one could get propane. The only propane you could buy was uh, to go get your bottle filled. That was the only propane available because uh, I don't know what was going on with the rail, either the railroad or something was going on. So I, I wasn't going to have any of that. And right away I bought myself uh, two 100 pounders. And as I make my house more and more and more efficient, the more I can get out of the gas, so uh, it's kind of nice. And I can uh, isolate it. I've got the isolated isolation valves, and plus I can do the switch over. I don't have to shut anything down. I just crack the other one open, spin that, spin this valve around, and I'm on the other tank. Close, then I can disconnect. The one thing I should add, and I'm going to do it, is some kind of a strapping with a lock, and it has. Um, nothing to do with thieves it's it's bears i have a bear problem and they uh they uh they're terrible they play with all kinds of stuff and uh, he could tear this off the wall and cause me a leak like i said i'm isolated i don't care about that i'm not worried about that but uh if, it, if he was ever to knock this over that'd be enough to tear that right off the wall so um that's why you should have some kind of a retainer to just to hold it in the event the bearer decides to start playing with this. Well, hot water, I might as well get into it now. I, uh, I used to burn wood faithfully. I used to burn wood faithfully. And last year, when I uh, 
Oh, there goes my rabbit. Oh, I scared him. <laughs> he went a whole one foot. Um, last year was the first time I heated with propane and hot water and everything with propane in the winter. I just wanted to try it. I've done so many things to this house that uh, I wonder what it costs to do it now. And when I first tried to heat this house, there wasn't an inch of vapor barrier in the entire house. I had to gut the hole inside. It was it was terrible. It was very terrible. It, I would go to bed, the, the baseboard, it was electric heat to boot, the baseboard heaters would be running wide open and it would be snowing on my head. I'd get the north wind blow, hit underneath the eaves of my house and I could just Imagine my uh, insulation, my baths of insulation, doing the Alibaba thing up there in my attic. <laughs> and he had these tiles that you just staple. You put the tile up and then you staple and then and the next tile fits into the you staple. And it's just like cardboard, these things. And it would literally snow on my head. I had to go to bed with it too. Whenever it had these, uh, you know, uh, 60 mile an hour winds driving snow. So I heated with wood. I had no choice back then. I had to heat with wood. And um, I went through uh, a submarine and a half to do that. Heat everything on uh, propane for one full year. One full year, it was a submarine and a half. And I can't really judge yet. Look, the rabbit's coming right. He's chewing up. I thought he was going to run right into me. <laughs> He's interested in something. Uh, I got a neighbor neighbor that lives next door, and there's an awful lot of uh, wildlife that um, we had. I had part just two days ago a whole family of uh, partridge there, and little little chicklets were about this big. They little chickadees there, and um, I have my small game. But um, they look terrible without the pajamas on. And uh, I can't really say that I've eaten rabbit where I could say it was really, really good. Partridge, they ha it has a very good flavor to it if you like uh, the wildness. And that, that's what I like. So um, I hunt partridge, but I don't hunt rabbit anymore. And, you know, only in season. Right? So the idea of this door is uh, I'm trying, to, trying to hide and but um, the idea of this door is uh, when your arms are full, you can just open and close the door because you've just grabbed all kinds of wood and you don't need your... And I've got another door on uh, the inside and the outside, or uh, inside and outside, on the uh, incoming where the wood comes into the driveway. Yeah, identical, just slides open like that. So there's the wood that I would uh, heat my hot water with. So this is just where the wood comes in. The wood comes in this way. So uh, if you remember from my first video, I was telling you guys that I was going to install a deep freeze and I was going to circuit control. Uh, using excess power only to uh, run a deep freeze. So I've been doing that for two weeks now, uh, very successfully. Uh, we're at the end of June. So really the hot months are July and August. Those are the hot ones, and then it starts cooling down again real quick where I live. And it doesn't take long, and it's 30, or I mean it's uh, below zero at night. Um, you know, October, November here, it, it all starts. So uh, it, it won't be using that much power once it starts to get cold. Then when it's in the sub cold, I can unplug it and I don't need any power going to my deep freeze at all. So we're talking about hot water, but it's in the way right now and I've just got it in my um, basement. It's going to end up outside here in this uh, my work area. This I do not heat. So if it's 20 below outside, it's 15 below in this area here. So that's where the deep freeze is going to end up, in my this, this workshop. I don't heat this workshop. When I told you it was going outside, 
I didn't mean outside outside I meant where it's it gets below zero so uh, here's the defreeze if I can get my cameraman now to follow me and I put this um, piece of styrofoam on top I couldn't believe how much cold I was losing out the top the top of this thing was freezing mind you I run this thing wide open I want to get it as cold as I can get it so that at night it holds that cold all night and I keep a full freezer so if I can get you to come on over here I'm gonna open the deep freeze here's my thermometer now if I can get you to zoom right into there it's almost as cold as you can get it. it's almost 30 below zero Celsius one more time let's see can you see that do you have to light your light maybe if I can get you to light the light on the camera just give me a second here oh it's there we go oh I just jumped it just warmed up well it's warming up fast but anyway so here's the 20 below and there's the 30 below and it was like about 28 below when I first pulled it out look at how quickly it's so uh, again you can see how uh, this is full of water this is full of water and then as I start buying more and more stuff I'll be pulling out here's a loaf of bread I just bought it there two days so uh, I used to have the exchanger for all of the years I had the exchanger right in the wood stove and this one here has like this catalytic idea basket and it's quite large and it causes and it's drilled and it causes the flames to be forced through the drill holes to uh, try and get more out of your flame before it goes up the flue and it already took quite a bit of room up that in the back here so I thought it would just be just as easy or easier to just put it right on top right on top is nowhere near as hot as if I had it in the wood stove. It performs a whole lot better inside the stove. And all I had was the letter C. So I only had about that much inside the stove, up another elbow, and then out again. So that was all I had, and it made all the hot water you could ever want. There's my uh, Cascade 60. Um, that held all the heat, and it, it provided really nice really nice then when I did this one I actually added two more passes it was it was hot but not as hot so when I did the other two passes now it acts finally um, as good as uh, the exchanger on the inside inches of exchanger depends how many people you have in your house so and then girls in particular teenagers are a lot harder on hot water than you know males of about the same age so if you have a household full of girls you might think of running a small package boiler <laughs> but um, so when I first did it I I had a very different stove back in those days I had a wood chief I was thinking of running 24 inches down and out because it was a 24 inch stove so you know the full 24 in and, two on, and uh, I could have almost been boiling the water and you don't want that you don't want the water that hot so um, I've always been very happy with it your wood stove anybody can do it and it just rolls on its own I don't need a circulating pump bottom to the bottom top with the top and just it does its thing if anything, uh, again, you'd want a taco valve. If you're one that lights a fire and lets it go, go out, and then you light another fire a few days later and lets it go out, uh, you're going to have to stop that flow. You can't allow that to continue to roll when the fire goes out, because it will, and you'll lose all of your hot water just as fast as you made it. So you'll need an isolating valve. And giving yourself a manual isolating valve Again, if it can happen, it will. It's just a matter of time. And if you ever forgot it closed once, and you let a rip roaring fire, well, you better not be going plastic like I did to the exchanger. You'd have to be all metal, because you're going to bring this to a boil. And forget about solder. Forget about if you ever did that once. You know,
point the leak. Knock me to the floor. Baby, baby, can I have some more? Kick me in the teeth, I'll never talk back again. I was on the other side, and never been so stoned on a Sunday night. I'm so messed up, but oh, do I feel fine. Lily took me by the heart and lit.